the music industry, a key sign that you're on your way to making it is when you go from just being a local star to a global one. Aubrey Drake Graham knows this too well. It's no secret that the boy has a plethora of classic records stemming from 2006 from when he entered the game up until now. Some have had more impact than others, but there's one record that is less talked about that played a unique role on his journey to become the global megastar he is today. Club Paradise, OVO, Young Money. I hate to run it down all the time, it gets repetitive, but it's all you need to hear anyway, so you should get familiar, you already know. Drake dropped Club Paradise in 2011, during the lead up to the rapper's timeless sophomore album, Take Care. Released during the blog era, it would be a reference to a gentleman's club in his hometown of Toronto. It would later become one of the most popular songs from Drake's catalog. Even though it was surprisingly left off the album, it was one that would inspire the name for his game-changing 2012 headlining tour. A tour in which he harnessed the culture by choosing to bring buzzing underground artists along with him. The only person that put on for me when I ain't have nobody was Drake. First conversation, he's saying he's gonna take me on a tour. We out here, man, on this motherfucking Club Paradise tour, matter of fact. As for the track itself, it has been coined as one of the Drakest ever tracks. Club Paradise is the peak of Drake as a mood. Released in the fall of 2011, two months before Take Care would make him the most popular rapper alive, the track paints the boy as suffering from his new level of stardom, and a toll is taken on those he left behind at home. Ridden with anxiety of having to conform to the industry norms like attending fashion week and messing up double cheek kisses, the backdrop is his favorite strip club in Toronto, a spot in his city where Drizzy and his squad were frequent when he finally made a name for himself. It is reported that he recorded a large portion to take care down the road from the club. Having now earned the right to know the strippers by their real names, Club Paradise reflects back on his path to the top and confronts the harsh reality of women from his hometown moving on. And fears of the mood in his city changed while he was away chasing his dreams, trying to convince his people that he isn't out of touch like they might think he is. The track will conclude with a legendary Bob Marley sample. Well, you see, where I feel about the music, it can be copied, you know? But it's not copy to it. It's the feel. You know? It carry a feel. Club Paradise accurately captures his sense of nostalgia and attachment to his city, his roots, family, and friends. It will become a nostalgic classic for Drake fans many of them with fond memories of where they were in their own lives when he dropped the song. At the time, it seemed like this was just a promo for Take Care, but we would soon find out that this single and Gentleman's Club would inspire the name for what would be the most important tour of the young star's career. It would be a catalyst to putting many rappers on the world stage such as Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole, and ASAP Rocky. I'm talking about Drake was the first person wow. to put on like before anybody. He didn't want to sign me. Yeah. He didn't want it was like, yo, that's raw talent, yo. Like I, you got to shine, yo. I'm I'm gonna see to it. For, I forever forever old Drake. Instead of booking known artists and affiliates like Nicki Minaj and Lil Wayne to open, he brought on fresh heavy hitters with zero mainstream hits that were relevant on the streets and in rap blogs. I sat down with Drake in Toronto a while back when I did my first show out there. Hit me up one day and said, you know what? Handpick, man, I want you to be on this, on this tour. And you know, it's a lot of artists out there, man, you know, that could have been on that tour with him. For him to just, you know, sit there and respect my music, get the same mutual respect. You know? That's a blessing within itself, so shout out to Tristan. The Six Guard wound up being the first to showcase these superstars in the making and expose them to the widest possible audience before other rappers did. Aubrey took another unorthodox stance by pushing to have shows in college amphitheaters and multi-purpose arenas. 
This was seen as a shock move due to the commercial success he had experienced following the release of his two studio albums. This was a commitment to remain connected to his day one fans. You have a serious love for your fans. He's the one that told me that you have so much love for your fans, you want to do private, intimate settings? Yeah, yeah. What's that all about? Um, Just like really, you know, giving people a chance to still feel connected. You know, I mean, it, I, I'm going to get to a point in my career where I have to do arenas, you know, which is which is difficult. You man. have to. Yeah. yeah. He would later confirm in an interview with MTV that the label wanted him to embark on a stadium tour, which he rejected. He stated, I fought really hard for this tour because, of course, they want me to go get the big bucks, go into stadiums and cash out. But I was just like, I really made this album for the same people that supported me since day one, so I can't sell out. Drake didn't sell his fans out, but the tour ended up being a sold out one. After bringing in $42 million from his 65 shows, the Club Paradise Tour was the highest grossing hip hop tour of 2012. What started as a song inspired by a local strip joint, Drake had now put it on the global stage, on his own terms. As for the artists he brought on tour, their careers began to accelerate soon after. This isn't to say that the boy was responsible for this, but the exposure would have helped. I just used this whole tour right here called Paradise Tour, like like promo. So basically, I wasn't looking for like no financial come up, nothing. Like just more intimate with fans, so they could really see who you are, how you develop as an artist. With an average of just fifty dollars per ticket, the world had just gotten the first real glimpse of the Drake effect, something that would permeate into the next decade. As for Club Paradise itself, it still humbly stands in the same place today as the inspiration behind a timeless track and his most important tour, one that set him on the path to superstardom. He used this old hangout spot as a bridge of symbolic inspiration to take him from a local legend to a global one. Club Paradise is a timestamp of classic Drake, released just before the iconic Take Care, the songs represent a time when vulnerabilities and anxieties were running high in his music. Having entered the realm of stardom, he began to reflect on the harsh sacrifices he had made to get to this point. The tour which was named after it would introduce us to the Drake effect and define the rest of his career. His choice not to sell out on his core fans and to rather perform in smaller venues instead of stadiums to stay in tune with them and to bring upcoming rappers on tour instead of established ones is a testament to his character and integrity. Traits that continue to contribute to his success today. Drake's Club Paradise theme is an example of how local can become global and how hard work mixed with humility can take you to great heights.